Mercedes Busch Grand National Series Budweiser 200. It is a beautiful, breezy day here in Dover, Delaware. Temperatures 80 degrees, clear skies, and the winds are gusting considerably here. The point standings here, the closest point battle in Busch Series history over eight years. Chuck Bowne, a slim 20-point lead over Jimmy Hensley. Then Bobby Labonte, Kenny Wallace, and Tommy Ellis. Now in four of the past six years, the man who was leading the points at this time of the year has gone on to win the championship. That bodes well for Chuck Bowne. Three wins, three poles, and he has completed over 98% of the laps he has run. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Punch, along with our analyst, Ned Jarrett, and we have a great deal of racing in store for you today. Now, Ned, over the past couple of weeks, the Winston Cup drivers have taken advantage of their vast speedway experience at Charlotte to qualify in the front few rows. But what a difference we have here today. Yes, it is quite a difference, Jerry. Last week, it was a mile-and-a-half track at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. This is a one-mile track at Charlotte. Yes, Winston Cup drivers up front at the start and at the finish. But the Bush Grand National regulars have qualified up front here today. I think this track is more of an equalizer for them. It's closer to the half a mile and lesser tracks that they run on on a regular basis. So they're able to get their car set up a little better. And, of course, it uh, suits their driving style a little better, too. But it does make for an interesting starting grid here today. And for more on that, let's go trackside and John Kernan. Very interesting indeed on the inside, Ned, as you see, we've got three relatively inexperienced drivers, Patty Moise, Jack Sprague, his first ever visit here to the Monster Mile, and of course, Bobby Labonte sitting on the pole. Now, on the other hand, on the outside, we have the experienced drivers, and that experience could come into play under long green flag conditions, as they should be able to take better care of their tires. Now, fuel, they should be able to push it and be able to go with only one fuel stop. But gentlemen, I believe that you'll see most everybody take advantage of caution situations to come in and take on fresh rubber. Indeed they will, John. We'll see a lot of pit stops because tire wear has always been a considerable, concern, considerable concern here at Dover, Delaware. The 36 car field, but some of the drivers who missed the field had mechanical problems. Kyle Petty, Dale Jarrett had a problem in qualifying, blew the engine in his car after a win last week at Charlotte. 47 cars on hand for a 36 car field, so a lot of drivers, good drivers, had to go home. NASCAR, brought to you by Molson Export. Nothing halfway about it, X says it all. The teamwork has to be perfect, and you have to be quick. Sharp and quick. Competing, trying to win the feeling of speed, the feeling of risk, the feeling of driving the limits, being right on the edge. Be brave and be afraid. That's a fantastic thing. Oh, yes, I love it. The Molson Indy. Be there. This is a research laboratory. It tries and fails to make Castrol motor oil break down. It's the place where Castrol is torture tested to meet the requirements of those who punish motor oil the most. You. The everyday Canadian driver. Back at the Monster Mile. Very demanding one mile racetrack here at Dover, Delaware. The Dover Downs International Speedway. High bank facility, 24 degree banking, and it will be a demanding race today for the drivers here in Bush Series Racing. Taking a look at the Sears diehard starting grid, Bobby Labonte, his first ever pole position, will lead the charge here along with the veteran Tommy Ellis. Row two, another rookie driver here on the circuit and the racetrack, Jack Sprague, along with the veteran Michael Waltrip. Back in row three, Patty Moise, her second best qualifying effort ever in Bush Series racing, along with Ronald Cooper. Then comes Elton Sawyer and the veteran Jimmy Hensley, who won just a few weeks ago up in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Back to row five. Harry Ginn, who has led more laps here than any other driver, and the five-time series champion, Jack Ingram. Row six, Rick Mast, who won his first ever race here at this facility. Back in row seven, Morgan Shepard and Steve Grissom. Row eight, Mark Martin and Dick Trickle. Back to row nine, Darrell Waltrip, along with Tom Peck. Row 10, two-time late model sportsman champion, L.D. Ottinger, along with rookie driver, Bobby Moo. Back in the 11th row, Tommy Houston, two-time winner this year on the tour, along with Bobby Hamilton. Back to row 12, Ernie Urban, a car we won't watch today, along with Jamie Obey, the two-time Bush North Series champion. Back to row 13, Ron Lamell Jr., Rookie of the Year last year on the Bush North Tour, along with Kenny Wallace, the Rookie of the Year last year on the Bush South Tour. 
and row 14, Dave Resendez and Ken Bouchard. Back in row 15, Bobby Dodder and an impressive young driver, Jeff Burton. Row 16, rookie contender Ed Faree and Robert Presley. Back in row 17, Dana Patton and Joe Nemechek. As you look at the rest of the starting field here, we'll take a look at Davey Johnson added, did not make a qualifying effort. He's a rookie driver from nearby Imperial, Pennsylvania. He blew both motors trying to qualify, barred an engine from the Elton Sawyer team and was able to start in the rear of the field. Take a look at this one mile facility here. One mile, Dover, Delaware. Banking nine degrees on the front and rear straightaways, 24 degrees in the turn. The qualifying pole speed, 143.885 miles per hour. First ever pole for Bobby Labonte. And we're being joined in the booth this afternoon. The fellow who would normally be in the fifth but has been a little bit under the weather this morning, but will be with us here in the booth on headset, our analyst, Benny Parsons. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. I woke up this morning and thought I had the big one, but that was nice to have a doctor two doors down. <laughs> Dr. I'm... Jerry Punch came down, took a look, and said, you better go to the hospital and get checked over. I did, and they said, uh, basically, I have an inner ear infection, but I had to take some medicine for that that has left me kind of drowsy. So if I fall asleep, well, I don't think I will. Well, this race is as exciting as it's going to be. I don't think I'll have any trouble. With this. It's good to have you here, Benny Parsons, who made that quick trip to the emergency room this morning, got some great care, and Benny Parsons and Ned Jarrett will be with me in the booth along with John Kernan Pitside as we get ready for Bush Grand National Series racing action from Dover, Delaware. The 13th time the Bush Series cars have come here. There has not been a duplicate winner with the exception of one man, Darrell Waltrip, who won this race twice. Everyone else has not won it but one time as they've come here. Pace car now pulling down a turn four. We should be set for an exciting start. Remember what John Kernan said, a lot of inexperienced drivers on the inside row They take the green flag from Bobby's truck. See Harry Kent down on the inside back in the pack there trying to get a jump on the start, but I think it's sort of backfired on him, Jerry. Let's pick it up where he left off in practice. Showing the way. The two veterans able to get a, a jump on the pole sitter. Bobby Labonte back in third spot. Already Tommy Ellis, who started outside, and Michael Walton, who started fourth, is now running second. Now, Tommy Ellis had an awfully good run at Charlotte Motor Speedway last week. He was the highest finishing regular Bush Grand National driver. Finished in fifth place down there. Led that race for quite a while. Felt that he had a good shot at winning it until he had a mechanical problem. The tail shaft on his transmission broke, losing some grease, and that slowed him a little bit. But uh, he was anxious to get here to Dover and get that Goo Goo Cluster Buick on the racetrack. And he's showing right now that he has a lot of speed. Jack Sprague driving the car number 34, a rookie driver, didn't get this right until the middle of March, now makes a move inside of Ronald Cooper, and Rue just about loses out of turn four, but did a great job hanging on to that Buick. Folks, when the announcer's voice goes up like that, the driver was in serious trouble. He really was. I expect he had to hold his breath for a moment here as Patty Moise making a move as well. Down on the inside, she's driving the blue and... Uh, but that's not orange. It's uh, it's not really pink either. It's, it's a bright color anyway. Car number 45. It's a Buick. That's the car owned by Mike Laughlin, the Buick for Patty Moise. Boy, look at her make a move down on the inside now. Off spray. Patty Moise coming off her best run ever in Bush Series competition at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Finished 13th on the lead lap. An impressive qualifying as they nearly come together out of turn two. Moise trying to keep her Buick. A pair of Buicks now she slides beneath the rookie Jack Sprague. And there is Jimmy Hensley, the veteran driver, in the car number 25, the blue machine, just to the right of your picture. Jimmy had a good uh, seat for that little action that was going on there in front of him when Patty Moise was trying to make his pass. And she, Jimmy saw how she did it, so he said, let's see if I can do the same thing. You gotta wonder if Jack Sprague didn't heat those tires up a little bit. Uh, he lost, nearly lost that car out of turn four. Now he's doing the 34 car drifting up in the turns a little bit, not on the bottom of the track where it was the first few laps. The groove that Jack Sprague is running in the white 34 will probably be okay later on, but right now the groove on the bottom of the racetrack, and that's where the cars are making the most time. He's caught on the outside, unable to get back to the inside, so therefore the cars are going to be passing him by unless he can get back in line. Now this is a battle for fifth place between Jimmy Hensley and Jack Sprague. Four cars out in front of them, of course, are Tommy Ellis, Michael Waltrip, Bobby Labonte, and Patty Moise. 
Hensley trying to put his Oldsmobile on the inside to move by the car of Jack Sprague. That's the Frank Cece racing car. John Young, John Young, who's the crew chief on that car, former crew chief for Alan Kowicki, back when Kowicki won rookie honors in Winston Cup racing. They certainly put a very strong mount together for the rookie driver, Sprague. He's doing a good job staying up there in that second groove. Now he might have went a little too high there, gave Hensley with the opening that he was looking for, and now he makes the pass. And the man we talked about at the top of the show, the current point leader now, Chuck Bowne, his car number 63. That's the Nescafe Coffee Pontiac moves beneath Sprague to take over the sixth spot. And here's Rick Mast in the car number 22, moving down the back straightaway inside of Sprague. Jack needs to get on the inside because this freight train is never going to stop. Now he has moved back down on the inside, but as I was going to say, the freight train was never going to stop unless he got back to the groove. You know, they got some riding on that car, Jerry. I think they just picked up a sponsor as Keystone on the side of the Jack Spray car, and I think that came about after he had his good qualifying run. It here. came about yesterday afternoon. They just put it on the sport as Key Keystone Beer Distributing here nearby, and they certainly felt that the young driver, 25-year-old youngster from Lansing, Michigan, Jack Sprague, has impressed a lot of people by qualifying that car up in the first few rows. laps here in Dover, Delaware. Tommy Ellis picking up where he left off in practice as the quick cars. He leads the way, but Michael Walter closing in. Early action here in the Budweiser 200 at Dover Downs International Speedway. Tommy Ellis trying to pick up his first one ever at Dover, Delaware, but a lot of veterans challenging. We'll be back after this. And we must look at this spark plug closely. For the good of North American cars, we must improve performance. And we must redesign it for quicker starts and better fuel economy. With the secret chosen by all Japanese and many European automakers. The NGK V-Groove design. NGK V-Power. The spark of genius. Here, I bought you something new. Hintimint? It's a mouthwash. Try it. That's refreshing. Hintimint. Smooth and it doesn't burn. New Hintimint. The new smooth power of scope. All right. Brace yourself. Holy mackerel. That is amazing. Back in Dover, Delaware for the Budweiser 200, Tommy Ellis, the veteran driver from Richmond, Virginia, showing the way, being chased by Michael Waltrip, then comes the youngster Bobby Labonte, an impressive performance by Patty Moise and the current point leader, Chuck Bowne. Six through ten, Jimmy Hensley, Rick Mass, Harry Gant, Morgan Shepard, and the young man who's a rookie here hanging on the tenth place is Jack Sprague. Tommy Ellis really showing the way. They've got to be very, very comfortable down in the Ellis pit. How about it, John Kernan? They are very, very comfortable. I asked Mike Coleman just a few minutes ago if Tommy was trying to make this a runaway lapper. He just looked at me and smiled with a confident smile. And you can see Tommy is still pulling away. Michael Waltrip now trying to really, he pulled Ellis to within about two or three car lengths, and now Tommy has simply just pushed the pedal and pulled away. Yes, as we were going into commercial, Jerry, Michael Waltrip had closed in and looked like he might, in a few laps, make a bid for the front, but then it seemed Tommy Ellis just turned the wig up and started pulling away. Benny Parsons, they made a gear change in Tommy Ellis' car late yesterday, just before qualifying. They went from a 411 to a 422. Ellis said, I need to be able to turn the RPMs here. What's the difference? Well, about 200 RPMs is all that is all the difference we're talking about. But what he the what he was wanting was more RPM in the middle of the corner, as we see Chuck Bound being passed on the outside. But he wants more RPMs in the middle of the corner when he gets back on the throttle at this racetrack. You have to hit the brakes going in the corner, let off the gasoline, hit the brakes, and get back on the accelerator. When you do that, you want all the RPM or horsepower available to you. The more gear, the more more RPM for horsepower. And it doesn't mean that they're necessarily pulling or turning more RPMs in the race because their lap speeds are slower than when they qualified and even during practice runs. Right now they're turning about 25.90 where we saw that the full speed was 25.02. That's the seventh and eighth place cars right there. Morgan Shepard in the Texas Peaks car. That's a Chevrolet Lumina and the Ford Thunderbird car number one coming to you. That is the Mark Martin machine. 
Darrell Waltrip having a problem with his uh, car number 17. It looks like he might be headed to the pits. Darrell has been sort of backpedaling through the field and indeed is coming into the pits. He's yep. going behind the wall, Ned. That means he's yeah. out for the day. Eddie Jones and the crew now walking around the car. That's a brand new race car that Mike Laughlin had built for Darrell Waltrip, who's the only driver to win here twice at Dover, Delaware. Waltrip having won Bush Series competition here at Dover years ago, back in the early days of the, of the tour. Walter picking up wins back in 85 and 86. Here's a battle for second place. Bobby Labonte has caught up to Michael Waltrip. He had dropped back more than a second behind Michael Waltrip. That is for second position. You can see Tommy Ellis on the left of your screen out front. But now, young Bobby Labonte in the Penrose Sausage Osmobile making a bid for Michael Waltrip. We, John Kernan talked about the rookie contenders. The pole shooter, Bobby Labonte, there in third spot. But again, his first race here at Dover. We didn't expect him just to go out and run off and hide. As a matter of fact, to be where he is, I am fairly impressed with his performance so far. He has impressed people all year long. And the first person to him yesterday after he qualified and set the pole time here was older brother Terry Labonte. He came up and took his hand and said, I'm buying dinner tonight, little brother. Bobby Labonte, remember last time we saw him run so well at Darlington on our ESPN coverage, he finished second down there in this same race car. There goes Jimmy Hensley by the Chuck Bound automobile and Bound, the point leader, seems to be a little bit off the pace. Looks yeah. like the car may be backing up just a little bit. Yeah, he has moved to the inside and let several cars pass him on the outside. That car is definitely not up to full speed. trying to make a move on Jimmy Hensley. Hensley in the Brown Fast Fair car number 25. And Ronald Cooper does make a pass. Well, Chuck Bound last week had some tough luck at Charlotte. They had problems with the right front of the car. Ended up finishing a disappointing 17th. And uh, there was a lot of concern here over whether he would be able to run the full 200 left. Chuck Bound still far slow to the inside. There, the current point leader. Chuck, is it tough to run 200 laps here at Dover, Delaware? I don't think it'll be too bad. Uh, you know, I like them tough. I like them hot. So uh, I'll have a water jug in there. I don't think I have any trouble. I'm more worried about the tires than I am about me. Well, if he likes it that much, he ought to be here tomorrow because we got 500 laps. It's going to be even hotter and even slicker. So come around tomorrow, Chuck. You'll love it. just jinxed him because uh, we showed how he was leading the points here. We've had five different point leaders in the first 12 events of the year in Bush Series competition. He took over the point lead a couple of weeks ago, and after his dismal finish at Charlotte, he is not running up the par today as Jack Ingram goes by him, as does Tommy Houston. Back up front, Tommy Ellis showing the way here. There's Ellis in car number 99, and now Michael Walter from really closing in on Ellis. They're moving in on the Jeff Spraker car. Yeah, when he gets in traffic, Jerry, I've noticed the last several laps, now that they're starting lapping cars, uh, Michael Waltrip is able to move in closer, which means apparently his car is working a little bit better up in that second groove. Tommy Ellis being very careful as he moves up on the last track. Michael Waltrip has some ideas about going on the inside of the Tommy Ellis automobile that time, but when he tried to turn under, his car got a little bit loose. Look. Is he going to try this on the outside? Come on, Michael. I thought you learned about going on the outside at Bristol, Tennessee, Mike Walter, but apparently not. He does it here at Dover, Delaware. They call Dover a big Bristol because of the high banks and the demands on the driver and machine. Michael Walter made it look easy. Made it look awfully easy. And I tell you what, he's already pulled about 10 car lengths away from Ellis. And the 44 car driven by Bobby Labonte looks like he's going to pull up on the back of 99. I just wonder. Could the 99's tires be going away? Could they be getting hot? What is the problem? Well, let's check in and see what's going on with the Darrell Waltrip car that pulled behind the pit wall moments ago. John Kernan. Well, Jerry, Darrell is done for the day. He says he's not really sure exactly what happened, only that the motor let go on him, and a very disappointed Darrell Waltrip making his way back to the Winston Cup garage. Well, I bet Dad Leroy has got to have mixed emotions about right now because Darrell is behind the wall, but his youngest son, Michael, is showing the way here at Dover, Delaware. Michael already a winner this year on the Bush circuit, having won at Richmond, Virginia, second race of the season. 
set on the pole and led quite a bit of that race in Richmond, Virginia. This is the car that Michael destroyed in that lap 14 crash with 24 cars at Daytona, and they had to rebuild this car and took it to Charlotte. Finally got the car finished, took it to Charlotte last week to race. It didn't qualify that well. In fact, started 21st, was all the way to third place when it suddenly had a vibration and had to pit and lost a couple laps and ended up finishing 18th. The black eight that we're seeing is Bobby Hamilton, a winner last year on the Bush Grand National Circuit. And there's the leader of the race now, Michael Walker. Well, that car is working well, Danny. He is able, it looks like, to go anywhere on the racetrack he wants to go. He he's can moved, go low or... He's moved up the racetrack, Ned. He moved up about a lane. Looked like the car picked up speed, a considerable speed up, just a little bit off the bottom of the racetrack. And I thought he had scared that Kool-Aid man clean off the hood after Bristol, Tennessee, but uh, he's back here today, and Michael Waltrip showing the way. We are 31 laps into the Budweiser 200 here at Dover Downs, Delaware. Michael Waltrip leading the veteran Tommy Ellison, Bobby Labonte. We'll be back after this. <clears throat> Here's to McCain from the tiny and the small for McCain Jr. Juice. <laughs> is the best taste of all. McCain Jr. Juice from Superb Concentrate is just enough juice and deliciously great. So let's have a junior and drink from the box. Uh-oh, time to split. Here comes the fox. McCain Jr. Juice. The just enough size. So what's little dandruff? Okay, imagine you're at the social event of the year and your dream girl says hello just as you do this. Her first impression? What a hunk. It's only a few flakes. Give me a break. The breaks are you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So? Try this. Head and shoulders? But you don't have dandruff. Your hair looks great. Bingo. Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Back in Dover, Delaware, 27-year-old Michael Waltrip showing the way with the Kool-Aid Country Time Pontiac here in Budweiser Racing, the Budweiser 200 Bush Grand National Series. Michael Waltrip having qualified that car in fourth spot. They were chasing for a while the car number 99 of Tommy Ellis. And there is the Ellis machine as he's now being reeled in by Bobby Labonte. Only about four car lengths. Labonte is the car number 44. And there you see him coming out of turn two. Average speed thus far, 138.996 miles per hour. Race record, 118.285. That record was set, by the way, by Michael Waltrip when he won here back a couple of years ago in September of 88. Let's check in the pits with John Kernan. Well, the reason Tommy Ellis is slowed a little bit on the track, Mike Hillman says Tommy radioed in as the player that the car is just a bit loose. So they're biding their time right now, waiting for a caution flag so they can come in and put on a couple of fresh tires. Chuck Bell leader of the Bush Grand National Tour is also slowing down. He has called in and said that he has broken a right rear shot. There are some problems to Chuck Bowne also. Well, a tough break for Chuck Bowne. He's broken a right rear shock. Last week in Charlotte, he broke a right front shock and also had part of the spring and A-frame come apart on the car. That's what cost him that uh, 17th place finish in Charlotte Motor Speedway. So the last couple of weeks, not, not a great uh, deal of luck for our current point leader, Chuck Bowne. This is second and third place we're seeing there. Tommy Ellison, the Goo Goo Clusters Candy Bar 99, and the Penrose Sausage 44, uh, Bobby Labonte. Now they're running second and third, and fourth and fifth are a couple of uh, veterans. Harry Gant has moved into fourth, and Mark Martin into fifth, and here we see them on the screen. Mark Martin started in 15th place, Jerry, and now has moved up to fifth. Harry Gant in that Buick Regal, that's a brand new body. It's a car they actually ran last year as an old Buick LeSabre, and they've been working to rebuild that body, put a brand new Buick Regal body on that stole car for the Ed Whitaker team. And there's the Bill Davis owned car number one of Mark Martin. And the only Ford in the field. Look how he's still standing right on the bottom of the speedway. All the other cars, even the leader, Michael Walker, has moved up to the second lane. And look at Michael Walker's been heavy, heavy traffic car leader. Right behind Dave Resendez, Kenny Wallace. He has just passed the Davy Johnson automobile. Ooh, look at him bobble, and Davy wow. Johnson going back. Mike Walter's car getting loose there, coming out of turn two, and he has moved up.
up the racetrack there is now the Davy Johnson car. That's the car number 26 out on the inside, the rookie driver. Here by Imperial Pennsylvania, and again Mike Waltz's car begins to bobble a little bit. Benny, you and I talked a little bit uh, yesterday. You made an observation that, and you can almost see that those black spots in the pavement there, they have put a, uh, some tar in some cracks in the pavement there. You guess he might have got up in some of that fresh tar and maybe, maybe scoot a little? I think that you're probably correct, man. He probably got a, a rear tire just in that tar, a little bit of that tar. And Jeff Fuller up in Massachusetts, we're talking about P. A-R, not T-I-R-E, but T-A-R. That's what they put in the crack. And when those race cars hit that tar, you're right, and it's almost like hitting ice. And another driver having some trouble, fellas, is this, this Raven Boat Buick of Rick Mass. He had been up to fifth place a moment ago with his car really slowing a little bit. Mass picking up his first Bush Series win back in September of 87. It's been a good track for him, but not today. How about it, John Kearney? What's Rick's problem? Well, they blew an engine early today and put in another one, Jerry. And right now, Rick says he believes he has lost the cylinder. So he's definitely slowing down and very disappointed. If you expected, another good run here at the bottom of the mile. Tough break for Rick Mass, Glenn Doyle, and the Raven Boat people. There's Michael Waltrip now, still trying to work by the Davers in this car. They go by the Bobby Dodder machine, the 08 machine. There's the car number 39 of Kenny Wallace. Heavy traffic there for Michael Waltrip. You know, Dave Resendez might have learned something when Walter passed him there a little early and then Walter slid high, Resendez got back around him. He might have seen the groove that Michael Walter was running and said, hey, maybe I can go a little bit faster if I move up there and stay in the lead lap. Tommy Ellis has gained on Michael Walter. He's going up a little bit higher than he was just a little bit ago. He has gained on Michael Walter, but it may be because Walter has caught in the traffic and behind Resendez and not able to get by him. Well, he has pulled away from Bobby Labonte back there. Labonte was right on him a little bit ago, Benny, so it looks like maybe Ellis has picked up a little speed, and it could be that he's learned that his car will work a little better. They say it was loose, and uh, most of the time, if you're running on the bottom of the racetrack, a loose car uh, is a little tougher to handle down there, so it might be that he's just finding the second groove is better for him. There we see Michael Walter just go Tommy Ellis, the second place car. And up in front of him, the red car just went in turn one with Michael Walter. There comes Harry Gant. Yeah, Harry Gant and Mark Martin are gaining on the leaders. A couple of veteran drivers who are accustomed to the track getting a little bit slippery. They will be here all afternoon tomorrow for 500 laps in the Budweiser 500. And they're getting those, getting those cars worked out today. Gant in the car number seven. There is the Skull Bandit Buick out of the Ed Whitaker stable. 50-year-old Harry Gant, who won twice last year in Bush Series racing along with Mark Martin. And Martin started back in 15th spot, the only Ford in the field. Bill Davis being loyal to Ford for many, many years, although they have not been able really to get those V6s up to horsepower. Now Gant moves to the inside. Goes by the Bobby Dodder car. And the yellow flag is out there. Struggle, I believe, over in turn two. Morgan Shepard, heavy contact to the outside retain wall on that Texas Pete car. Look at that. Heavy, heavy damage in the rear of that car. Morgan had moved up to sixth position. He was not far behind Harry Gant and Mark Martin, the battle that we were watching there. But, boy, that Texas Pete Chevrolet is really crumpled up. There's a shot of Morgan Shepard, who, of course, will be in that motorcraft car tomorrow for Bud Morris, currently second in the Winston Cup points as Bobby Scruggs waves the yellow flag. Morgan, heavy contact with his Chevrolet Lumina out of turn two. Safety crews are there. Morgan, apparently, the car backing in the, into the wall. Let's take a look and see if we can see exactly what happened. Well, you can see he's already into the wall. Heavy damage on the back of the Texas Pete Chevrolet. The car 